name is Troy Moody. I work primarily in glass um, and glass mixed media. So everything from stained glass, kiln formed glass, and then mixing that with acrylic and collage. Even when I was, you know, a kid or like in high school, um, I was drawing a lot, it was mostly pen and ink. I was really, really focused on line and contour and gestures. Um, and then obviously, you know, by the time I found glass, I was in my 20s um, or late teens, early 20s. Um, and that was very, very traditional stained glass, um, medieval techniques that haven't changed in close to a thousand years. Um, and then sometime in the mid to late 90s, I got involved in kiln form glass, which was more contemporary look, more spontaneous. Um, and then since then, over the last 25 years, while the focus has always been glass, um, and it still is, and I still work in all of those different glass disciplines, more and more I am combining it with the mixed media. So I'm able to bring in this practice that I had you know, earlier in my life of drawing and painting and collage and creating a story or a composition that way, but then imposing over that the, the fused glass, which is a whole new, um, a whole new language for me. Obviously, my uh, mother has been painting my whole life. So um, once I started kind of developing this recipe of doing the fused glass mounted over the mixed media, um, it was only logical that one day in conversation, you know, we would come to the idea of that she could do some watercolors on the cradled artboard that could accommodate my fused glass. Yeah, he said, Mom, why don't you do some of your paintings on the cradle board and then I can put my creativity with my fused glass on top. And um, we said, well, let's see what Susan says. And so it's a fun relationship. He's a good kid, so. Glass as a medium definitely presents its own challenges. There's definitely logistics and parameters that I'm having to work within because there's certain things that glass just won't do. Um, so that is a unique challenge to working with glass particularly. Um, but aside from that, I mean, there, there's not a lot of challenge when I'm actually creating the work. When I'm able to get into the studio, clear my head, you know, get in the right space, um, and just kind of plug in and, and or plug out whatever it is, tune out. Um, then it then it just happens naturally, and it's just you know hours fly away and days and weeks. Um, so there's there's not a challenge in that regard for me. There's a lot that makes the celebration unique. Um, I think probably the strongest is um, really all results of the fact that we're here for ten weeks. So the artists get to know each other, um, we develop a camaraderie, um, we can, you know, get helpful critique and advice from each other. Um, so there, there's that, and then I guess, you know, another side of that same camaraderie that comes from being here for 10 weeks is we get to know a lot of the patrons, you know, a lot of the, the visitors that come through and see us. Um, and they'll come through multiple times throughout the, the season, the year. Um, so I think those are two really significant, unique aspects of, of the celebration. Um, and having that extra time here, not only does it build camaraderie, but it allows the artists all the time to just explore their craft and you know, kind of push the boundaries and um, you can watch the work evolve over the 10 weeks. You know, I love the family that Susan has created with the celebration because I feel like you know everybody is my kid because I'm so old I could be everybody's mother but um, you know like I can go along and talk to all the artists and say how's your mom is she out of the hospital how's your you know whatever because I feel like they're all family and and you care about them you you want them to sell you want them to show their works and it's a great it's a great relationship.